What's up guys, right on go here, and welcome back to 100 drops of Apex Legends. The series where we drop every POI in the game, on all 5 maps, 100 times each, in a row. For each drop we track 3 primary stats, kills, damage, and wins. At the end of all 100 games, we total these numbers, average them out, and compare them to my averages for this season to get a gauge for how well I performed. And along the way we look at each POI's history, layout, and advantages and disadvantages to improve your understanding of the POI and the game of Apex itself. This is POI 10 out of 100, and also our first time in this series heading to the biggest map in the game, Stormpoint. And when it came time to decide which of Stormpoint's 18 POIs to drop out 100 times first, I wanted to dive straight into the hottest one right away. I dropped Stormcatcher 100 times in a row. This is what I learned. I'll tell you after this. Ah, oh, what? Oh. Wait, the ring line. Do I take your ult No, 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 I, I, I killed myself. I killed left, 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 left! My, my mouse glitch, my mouse glitch. Stormcatcher is one of the original 17 POIs on Stormpoint, and thus has been in the game since Stormpoint's introduction in Season 11. It's arguably the most consistent hot drop on the map, only facing competition in that regard from Cascade Falls. It's composed of a large central building elevated by tall stilts, with gravity cannons on the north and south sides, and smaller buildings with some floor loot and pills on the east and west sides. Now I'm going to teach you how to hot drop the main building. Here is every pill, floor loot pile, or door you can land on in and around the building. Which one you should drop at will depend on your dropship angle. You want to ensure that you are either the first person to a door, can land on a gun for free, or have a pill to yourself. Whichever of these landing points does that for you at your unique landing angle, go for it. If you're not a big hot dropper, I recommend landing at one of the houses on the fringes of the POI and walking up to the main building late to third party. Regardless of where you land or how you choose to play the contest, understanding the intensity of the drop, aka how many teams are in your immediate vicinity, is crucial to your survival and success. Isolating fights, poking active skirmishes, and most importantly staying healthy are three of the biggest things you can do when fighting the initial contest at this POI. Once you've survived said initial contest, and hopefully have a couple kills to your name, here is a great aggressive rotation that will further maximize your kill opportunity. Head directly west to the outside of Command Center. There will be a team or two in there decently often, but not always. If there isn't anyone, feel free to loot that POI if you need to scavenge, or continue pushing towards the middle of the map to the central rotation, Cascade Falls. From there, head to wherever zone may be pulling you. But that's just about everything you need to know about the history and composition of Stormcatcher. Let's get into the 100 drops themselves, where we'll be going over key moments from my games that I'll explain, so you can learn from me in order to see better results at this POI. <laughs> Check this, oh. Did you hit her? Oh, I hit it! Oh my god, I'm crazy! Yo! Did you actually? <laughs> no, I didn't. Make sure we don't get land on. I think they got landed on. Which team? I heard someone like flying in. I'm scanning. I'm scanning. West, scanning. West, west. Scanning. west. I said west. It is. Are you fucking deaf? Yeah, I, I thought you said west. <laughs> Welcome to the gameplay section of the video. Here we'll be taking a look at the best and most insightful plays and moments that happened to me during the course of my 100 drops, and break them down in real time. Oh, and drop a like if you made it this far in the video as well, because that tells me that you're enjoying the style of video I make, and that I should continue making them in the future. Kicking it off with the game showcase, we'll be following drop number 49, which was a game of duos played with my brother Pupin. The drop starts off a little shaky, with me getting two guns I'm not particularly comfortable with, my brother having to go a little deeper into the main building to get a gun, that would be ideal. I hit solid shots on this Valkyrie and queue up to heal and take height, then hit a super satisfying 126 heady on this horizon. I follow it up with another body shot to downer, and drop down to engage the Valk, who has just knocked my brother. We both play tight angles as we're both weak, and we trade shots. I back up to this head glitch expecting a wide swing, but the horizon crawls in to be rezzed. I hear the audio cue and push to deny it. Now what I do here is typically unwise. I double kick the door and commit to the push. 
The reasoning for this is I didn't think I had enough time to squeeze in my own res here before the Valk would have gotten our teammate up, so I committed, and it ends up working out for me in the end. After full healing and looting the rest of the POI, we follow the aggressive rotation and end up at Cascade Falls, where there's a multi-team fight taking place. We know one enemy was just respawned, so we want to get aggressive here and look for free kills without overextending such that we become the center of attention. I Kobe ult this guy who was taking pot shots from a distance to buy us time to push the enemy closest to us. We secure that kill and move deeper into Cascades. I clean up this solo horizon pretty quickly and try to move us back a little bit, as I can tell that the other teams in the area are starting to focus on us. I call for a retreat, but Cupid is just barely not able to get his phase off in time and goes down. But I don't panic. I know this is very much still winnable with two teams in the area and no focus on me. I walk up to third party their fight and time it perfectly wiping this bloodhound who was the last survivor. Now it's time to get Pupid back in the game. I stick him and we head back to Cascades so he can get his stuff back. Then we hear another duo nearby, who had looted the boxes of our last fight while I dipped to respawn. They are playing this building and not doing a very good job of covering their angles. Recognizing this, I take full advantage and land this thermite before moving to flank and clean them both up from the side. I pick up a hemlock from a care package, and we hear shots coming from the ring in Prowler Den. Regardless of whether it's the last two teams fighting, or just one team killing Prowlers, if we get aggressive here, we can find easy kills on distracted enemies. I kill this catalyst through her wall with my last bullet, and Pupid cleans up her teammate who was weak from zone. Now you may say, Groudon, that's not very impressive. Those kids were fighting Prowlers in zone as one of the last three squads in the match. They were terrible. And yes, that's the point. I'm playing in the same old pubs lobbies that you guys will be playing in when you queue up. These types of things will happen in your lobbies. I want to show you how you can capitalize on such opportunities and get more kills and wins as a result. Now it's just us and one other squad. I want to relocate as fast as possible here, as the last team should be closing in on our position if they've heard us fighting, and we're on the far side of ring in Prowler Den, which only has a few entrances and exits that could be gatekept pretty easily. But just as I suspected, as I walk out the gate of Prowler Den, I run smack into them. I pop my Q and drop ulti to create separation and allow me to pop a battery, and finally move to engage the last team fight. Almost cracked. Good shit. Oh my god! Oh, we're so much better! Up next is the tips and tricks section of the video, where we'll go over the most useful jump spots, angles, climbs, and general knowledge that will help you win more gunfights at Stormcatcher. First is probably the most useful one for the initial contest, the grav cannon jump. If you position yourself at the foot of the grav cannon on the north side of the POI, it'll shoot you back and up straight onto the roof of the building, useful for getting back up to ultimate height if you need to drop down to low ground. Next are these small ledges underneath the main building. These can be used as a spot to pop heels, or as a rat spot in the late game. Here, there's this Tarkov-esque dark corner that you can squeeze into for a pretty sick angle on anyone coming through this door. And lastly, an alternative route to the roof, barring a grav cannon. These doors can be opened outward and used to climb up to height as well. Sharky pushes, Dome Shield is placed, and now Dark Zero is going to be your champions of the Apex Legends Global Series! Back to back! Don't go up. Oh, that Rampart, 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 get back down, get back down, get back down, <laughs> fuck that shit. Oh, landing on us! To conclude this installment of the 100 Drops of Apex Legends project, let's look at how our stats from our 100 Drops of Stormcatcher compare to our averages so far in this season. Here's that data for reference. As you can see I'm averaging 571 damage per game, 1.87 kills per game, and have just above a 7% win rate. How does Stormcatcher compare to that? Pretty damn well actually. I averaged an improved 2.36 kills per game, 652 damage per game, and I won 10 out of my 100 games, giving me a 10% win rate. That's an improvement in all three stats I tracked, and for the second episode in a row as well, after Atmos Station broke records last week. Stormcatcher wasn't quite that good, but it was close enough to land it right behind Atmo at second place on our POI leaderboard. 
just beating out the old number one, Hammond Labs. And for reference, here's a breakdown of all the game modes I played over my 100 drops as well. To summarize the experience, I'd ranked Atmos Station up there as one of my favorite drop spots on Stormpoint prior to doing this challenge, so my comfortability with the POI going in probably contributed my good results. I think it's one of the best POIs for kill farming on Stormpoint, and also it's just a great mid-map POI with plenty of rotation options and pretty good loot most of the time actually. I'm really excited to see how the rest of Stormpoint stacks up against this drop, but that's a story for another episode. I'm Groud on Go, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out the Wonder Drops of Apex Legends playlist on your screen right now, which has every episode in the series to date, and subscribe for the next 90 POIs. Next week we're headed back to World's Edge, to another central hot drop, and an old friend will be joining us as well. See you next time.